Mark Urban. Well, Alexander Lebedev was one of the biggest foreign investors in the Ukraine and has been, has in the past been very outspoken in his criticism of the Kremlin. He's the publisher of the Independent and the Evening Standard newspapers here as well as the Novoya Gazeta newspaper in Moscow. And he's uh, with me now. Good evening. Good evening. Um, let's start on the Western approach to this issue. There's a debate obviously going on. Should the West, should the US arm the Ukrainians? Your view on that? I think it's fairly risky. I would rather be inclined to support Frau Merkel's position, which is using all of the diplomatic force, which probably also with some combination of the sanctions which are being applied to Russia, and try to find a solution within the framework of diplomacy rather than arming any of the sides, because there's a big risk of heavy arms getting into wrong hands always. There's quite a few other risks uh, which, which might result from that attitude. Hopefully, the discussion in the United States is more a factor of putting additional pressure on, on the Russian side rather than really going rather the mundane really way. Fueling the war. OK, talk about President Putin. I mean, I know you haven't seen him for a while, have you? You're not close to him anymore, but... For, for many years. Yeah, many years. What do you think his game, what's his objective here? Well, first of all, um, I think calling him names, like Fug, comparing him to Saddam Hussein, like Carl Bill did, or even somebody in this country to Adolf Hitler, doesn't help much. I don't think that uh, the more you corner somebody in Kremlin, the, the best is the result, it's vice versa. So from somebody like myself, having been criticizing Kremlin for years and sacrificing most of my business for that, I reserve the right to, when necessary, to support Putin on the simple reason that there could be much worse outcome if, for example, we see him ousted for this way or another. Not that I've heard of any revolution historically in the history of mankind which has ever resulted by, by any sort of a proper product rather than scoundrels sort of using the fruit of that, which is being started by fanatics. Mm. And um, so I think the civilized nations, and I would like to see Russia as being a part of the civilized world, have uh, much more serious threats like ISIS. Right, so you have to sort this out, basically. Rather than you have to sort this out. I us. hope, I hope yeah. what's going to happen tomorrow with Minsk is that uh, the wise politicians would focus on real solutions because um, whatever is the blame on Russia for interfering in the, in the war conflict in the eastern Ukraine, it's quite clear that 90% of what they call insurgents or separatists or terrorists, the way they call them in, 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 in Kiev, are locals rather than any Russians and mercenaries or Chechens. Yeah. So it's a bit more complicated and I'm it's calling not to oversimplify things on, on, on giving the proper analysis. Let's talk about the Russian economy, if we might. Just, we, don't, we don't have very long and I, it, it's obviously a lot is going on there. Now, you're living in Moscow. Mm -hmm. To what extent are people there feeling the collapse in the exchange rate, the sanctions, the collapse in loyal revenues to the government? There's no doubt they are feeling it. Russia is relying on, on imports, uh, on, on whatever you, you call being used normally by an ordinary Russian. And definitely the exchange rate collapse, which is 100% over a few months, would, would be affecting the life of every ordinary Russian on a daily basis now. So it's going to be felt, that's beyond any doubt. But I think the problem with the Russian economy is not as much actually the oil price or even the sanctions. It's more of the wrong economic and political model. Right. The more we go European way by building institutions, and thanks to Ukrainians now having a better chance to do that, because what they, they have to do is probably setting up an independent judiciary. They do have a parliament, they have free media, they have proper election, and uh, with some luck, if the war in the eastern Ukraine is stopped, they have a very good chance of, in a, in a two or three years, really recovering the economy three, three and gaining words, the upper hand over the Russian in competition. Does, does the Russian crisis, economic crisis, strengthen Putin, who can blame foreigners, be busy overseas, or does it help him? I think it's going to weaken the Kremlin's positions overall. And if anybody wants to listen to my advice on Kremlin, I would recommend them still to focus on changing the economic and political model. Because everything else is... Because this is a medieval economy of 19th century. There's no way you can be strengthened by sort of a standard of living of the people coming down. There's no way. I mean, the people are not that simple. Alexander and even Lebedev. with the propaganda, no way you can do it. Alexander Lebedev, thanks very Thank much. Thank you very Join much. Us. Thank you.